one and we are live ptz optics presents back to the basics live every wednesday at 11 a.m pacific 2 p.m eastern a high definition broadcast on facebook focusing on camera line tutorials with our chief screaming officer paul richards and our social media manager tess protesto back to the basics live New videos every Wednesday. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Back to the Basics here at PTZ Optics Live. We live stream every Wednesday at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern, right here on Facebook. And we stream in 720p to Facebook, and then we download in 1080 recording for YouTube. So if you're watching this on YouTube, you get the better resolution. Um, Tess is not here today. She's working from home. So I'm going to tackle a very important topic that so many of our customers have been asking about and I think can really benefit from this and that is RTSP streaming. And we support multiple ways of RTSP streaming. Uh, so let's look at the different ways and we're going to look at streaming to VLC which is a very special plugin that supports H.265 now which is the most advanced compression algorithm available today which PTZ Optics supports and uh, we can actually use the NewTek NDI plugin with VLC in order to connect VLC and our video source to multiple different video production solutions like vMix and Wirecast and all these other ones. So PTZ Optic supports H.265. It's the same quality roughly as H.264, but you're going to see 20 to 30 percent less bandwidth used in um, your network, which can be crucial for so many real world applications. So let's talk about MJPEG, which is completely uncompressed video. It sends every single frame over the network with no compression whatsoever. This is ideal for dedicated networks where you have no other uh, bandwidth to worry about. You've got no congestion. Maybe no one else is on your video network. Now on our network here at our office, um, MJPEG can sometimes stutter a little bit because there's so much streaming going on, 50 different computers, hundreds of devices if you include all of the smartphones and different devices trying to access bandwidth on your network. So using H.264 and now H.265, we can s reliably use our existing networks and, ha and have still really great 1080p video off our cameras in 60 frames a second. I'm going to show you just how good H.265 looks in this video, but the main reason is, is the bandwidth. You know, a lot of people don't have dedicated networks that can support uncompressed video. Now, in this tutorial, and I'm taking your questions, I'm list looking in the chat right in front of me, I have my, um, my uh, chat room here, but um, we're going to look at streaming to the NDI plugin and then using NDI to connect to vMix, Wirecast, Livestream, the NewTek TriCasters, and some of the really great NewTek NDI tools, such as the ISO recorder, which will effectively allows us to isolate, do isolated recordings of multiple NDI sources, could be potentially our RTSP streams. So that's exciting. So first of all, let's look at the setup. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually pull up a live setup right here. Come on. Here we go. So on the this side over here, you're seeing this is uh, the camera feed. Now I'm going to take this full screen for a second so you can see the quality. This is H.265 streamed directly from a camera in our office. Um, it looks like Sharon, our secretary, is having a private conversation in there, so we won't listen in. Um, hopefully she won't do anything too crazy. But you can see the video quality is very rich. We're not seeing any real compression or degradation. And I personally believe that the common man cannot tell the difference between H.265 and uncompressed video, yet it's so much easier to handle on our network. So, for example, you can see here we've got pan, tilt, zoom of our camera and we've got a whole bunch of options for RTSP streaming. So first of all, let's go through a couple of these and I mean any questions just let me know. I'm here to answer. Um, 
but you can see here that first of all I have 60 uh, Hertz as my priority there's something called dial priority which is set by default this is the dial on the back of the camera which I'll show you right here look like this you can see right here there's a dial on the back of the camera normally this dial is used to set the frame rate and resolution of your camera and you can see on the bottom of the camera oh, flip it up this way that we have all of these dial numbers and they all correlate to like 0 is 1080p 60 and then 1 is 1080p 50 and so on and so forth so that's what the dial is and I've turned dial priority off so I can take I'll just say 60 Hertz is my priority and um, I'm using the main profile. You can see that main profile is actually grayed out because the art we're RTSP streaming right now. As you can see here, to VLC, it's locked in the VLC, so we can't edit that portion of it. But you can actually choose a high um, base level as well, which is even higher quality. Now the next thing here is you can see we can do MJPEG. H.264 and H.265. Now, as I mentioned, MJPEG completely uncompressed, but you're going to want to have a dedicated gigabit network in order to handle that. It is the best quality RTSP possible. My engineers say it's just as good as SDI, just as good as HDMI, and um, the latency now is um, actually very low because there is no encoding that needs to be done. So if you're looking for the lowest latency, highest quality stream off the cameras you will choose MJPEG but as I mentioned multiple times that may not be realistic for your network H.265 might be the most realistic now as you can see here we have multiple resolutions we can choose from um, the lower your resolution the less bandwidth that you'll take and there's H.264 and H.265 calculators you can use to learn a little bit more about what you're going to be doing there uh, we have our frame rate set to 30 frames per second and we have our I keyframe at 30, but we could actually increase that as well. Um, but as you can see here, go back to our, our main profile, the video quality is very rich. There's no pixelation. Uh, the frame rate is very good. I mean, we're not shooting a, a sports game here, but we can definitely see exactly what's going on here. We've got a very good quality. Now, only last thing here I wanted to mention is that there is variable bitrate and constant bitrate and then there's a fluctuation level the fluctuation level is really only used for variable bitrate if we're doing constant bitrate that means we do not want it to vary at all throughout my our network um, so again best for dedicated networks but also best if you want to lock the video in with audio so we can stream audio and video together over this RTSP stream and um, if you are doing that you really don't have to worry about constant bitrate or variable bitrate but a lot of people want to so many of our customers today and I'll just kinda of go full screen to explain this so many of our customers are actually asking to to go all IP and they want to do it at any cost they don't want to run SDI cables they don't want to buy um, they don't want to buy capture cards and you know Tom Sinclair called this the poor man switch and by doing low latency MJPEG RTSP streaming and then ma and doing a constant bitrate so that there's no variation between latency you can um, sync up the audio with the video if you're handling audio from a separate source and you, it's fairly reliable as long as you're using a constant bitrate so that's what that's used for so once all of that is done all we have to do is go to system and we want to hit reboot now I'm not going to do that because I'm already in the midst of an RTMP stream and I've already handled that you can see a little bit of motion there um, some shadows I guess some people are walking in and just take a look at that it, there is very good when there's motion it, it, it's handled very well and the quality in my opinion is quite good and the latency is very low so with that being said now let's get back to our presentation and I want to talk about some of the implications and then we'll talk about the VLC plugin and I do have my eyes on the chat here so let me know uh, if you have any questions I am here to answer them 
Okay, so we've gone ahead and logged into the PTZ Optics camera. We've set it up for H.265 streaming, and we've rebooted the camera. So now what we want to do is we want to go into VLC, and we want to go ahead and hit playback. Actually, what I'll do is I think I can zoom into this just a hair here. Whoop. And in media... We want to hit open network stream. And what we want to do is do RTSP slash slash the IP address slash one. And that right there is how you connect to the camera. That's the, the RTSP stream that we set up with H.265. That's been done. Because that's been done, I can see my video here. And I've got my RTSP stream right there. So we'll look at that in a little bit. So once we've done that, we've pulled our video into, and by the way, um, I just found out that VLC is really one of the only um, applications that supports H.265. vMix doesn't support H.265. Wirecast doesn't support it. I don't believe the TriCasters support it, but because it's supported in VLC, we can now use the NDI plugin to bring it into all of these hundreds of different applications that support the new tech NDI, and that's what makes this kind of game changing. So we've pulled in our media, now it's time to add the new tech NDI. So uh, the first thing you want to do, if you haven't already, is download the NDI tool pack for Windows. It's not available for Mac. This is, uh, it is available for Mac, but it doesn't include the VLC plugin, which is what we need. So, we're going to go ahead and download that, and once it's installed, you're going to see in Preferences, and I would like to actually do this live here. Let's go ahead and show this live, up close and personal here. Um, right here under Tools, Preferences. This is going to pull up a little box like this, and there's two different options. One for audio, and our output module, we will choose the NewTek NDI audio output. And then for video, we will also choose the NewTek NDI. And that's really all that's needed in order to connect VLC to the new tech NDI and I'm so surprised how easy it is to really set up. It is so simple. As soon as you install the tools, that will show up in VLC. So we talked about that. I showed you that live. Very simple. And now we can do so many different things as I mentioned before. And this actually entire idea stemmed from a customer wanting to set up a ISO recording of RTSP streams. And I wanted to use vMix, actually. Hi, Kyle. Thank you for being here. Good to see you. I can see, I'm can. i reading the chats right up here. Um, and we wanted to set up an ISO recorder. And originally, we were using vMix. And vMix will only support cameras and NDI sources for the multi-corder. So the workaround that we found is that if we turn our RTSP streams into... Um, if we turn them into uh, NDI available sources on the network, then we can go ahead and pull them in as inputs and use a multi-corder on RTSP streams. So there's, uh, that brings me to my next point here, which is NewTek also offers quite a few different tools for using the NewTek NDI, and some of them are free. For example, NewTek offers an ISO quarter. There's a free and a pro version. So the free version is actually going to work for our customer. He has two cameras. He wants to ISO record them. So he wants to, uh, a, a clean recording of both. Um, and he could actually use vMix to do this, uh, vMix 4K or higher, or he can use the free NewTek ISO recorder. There is also a pro ISO recorder for up to 16 channels of ISO recording. So there's a whole lot that can be done there. Also, 
as you can see here, if we're using the NewTek NDI, we can very easily pull in the video via, um, and there we go. So I'm going to go ahead and close VLC for a second and then reopen it so it shows up as a source. I believe you do have to go ahead and reset it um, as soon as you um, add all of the preferences for NDI. So as you can see here in vMix, you can see that little VLC button there. That's showing that the camera is being pulled in via NDI and is automatically detected via NDI, via the vMix. Um, and that would be the same for Wirecast. It would be the same for um, Livestream and all of the other NDI compatible systems that are out there. So also again this was to, s to solve a customer's issue but this is a workaround for vMix if you are trying to use the multicorder with RTSP streams you can now use the vMix multicorder um, through the VLC plugin which was my goal of all of this but it also opened up so many possibilities for using the new tech NDI with H.265, H.264, and of course MJPEG, which is the lowest latency and highest quality streaming that you can do. And that is it. So thank you so much for watching. I'm going to go ahead and jump in. Thank you, Eugene. I appreciate the kudos. I'm going to run the credits, and we're going to save this video for YouTube, and then I will be back and answering all of your questions live. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. I'll see you in just a moment.